Stupid Garbage Podcast. Oh, I like that. Okay. Hello. Bada bing, but hello. <laughs> bada bing, but hello. Bada bing, bada boom, as I was saying here. Let's Thank put that you. up there. That should fix all of our problems, including all of the terrible content. You said you had <laughs> a, uh, a show you wanted to... So, first about? of all, I finished my work in progress yeah. show. Yeah, how was it? It, spoiler alert, ended on a very, very down note. It was very unfinished, very unsettled. I was had no answers to anything. Was this the first season of Yes. It? Okay. But I don't know if there's a second season, so... I don't know. I have to look into it. But it, it was just like, again, I think as I've said, like it's about a girl who's, about a woman who's, you know, mental health is really, really bad, always. And she's always fighting with like OCD, depression, anxiety, like all that fun stuff. So uh, it ended and I was just like, is she going to like be okay? Like mm. <laughs> there's a thing in the story where she has almonds. Like someone gave her almonds as basically like a passive aggressive way to make her lose weight. So... Mm. Okay. They were like, here, maybe it, eating almonds. It's fine. We're, I I don't really think <gasps> that the... What? You're going to tell me to shut up. No, no, I'm not telling you to shut up. I'm just saying I don't think... You can keep talking about it. I don't think I'm going to understand why it matters. It's, unless it's, you, it's extraordinarily brief, and if you didn't cut me the fuck No, out. no, I know. I'm just, I'm, it's not extraordinarily brief in the scope of how much time we have for this podcast, sure. necessarily. Well, it is. Ready? I'll so, do it in like two sentences. No, but uh, so, Jessica, if every single point you bring up, you delve into in this level of detail... Go ahead, go ahead. Do whatever you want, no, and I'll listen. No, 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 please. Right. Uh, you, no, you're right. You're right. No, no, you're no. Right. Forget my notes. Forget my notes. They're stupid and bad. Go ahead. <laughs> almonds make people throw up So basically, up or something. this lady gave her almonds as a way to make yeah. her lose weight. Sure. So this Expand woman... Expand upon that, if you will. That's it. They're healthy. So she thought, instead of eating donuts, eat almonds. So... Did she say that explicitly? No. I need more details. I don't know. She didn't say stop. So I'm trying to be brief. But I don't understand. So anyway, I don't know, Rob. Okay. This woman also was not super skinny. So how was she you watching now? this? Stop. What is this on on Crackle? Amazon Prime. Amazon I think it's Prime. on Showtime actually. But anyway. And what's your Amazon Prime account? Can you stop? And uh, and password. So then she takes these almonds what's and what's your she, home address? You yeah, go ahead. She takes these almonds and she's like, you know what? There are 180 almonds in this jar. I'm going to take 180 days. And if I still feel as sad as I do now, I'm going to kill myself. So the wait, whole wait, show... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. I told hold you on. it was worth talking about. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So someone... Uh, let me top to bottom see if I understand this. Okay. This fat person. Yep. Someone gives them almonds. Yep. You think passively... Passive no, she aggressively. says passive aggressively. Like the character thinks that the woman was being passive right, aggressive. Right, but the woman might not have been... But in, so in the scope of this show, someone gave her almonds, and yes. she took it as an affront. Sure. Bristled at that and said, this makes me so upset. Life is terrible in general. Yeah. And people think I'm just a fat, fatty, fat, fat. I'm going to eat an almond a day. No, no, no. She throws them out. Oh. She doesn't even eat them. She just throws them out. Oh. She's like, this almond represents... <laughs> Not even going to go this far towards the weight loss journey. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, so she, she goes to like a diet... Um, so she she counts the almonds in the jar like someone at a carnival game. Sure. And uh, wins suicidal thoughts. So she says 180 <laughs> almonds. Yeah. Sounds like a pretty small jar of almonds, but I guess 180 almonds. A half a year, half a year from now, if I have not finished all the almonds, I will have killed myself. No, she thinks if I still feel as bad as I feel now, I'm just gonna kill myself because I already want to die. Okay, but why doesn't she keep the almonds as a snack? <laughs> Why you have to throw the almonds out? You don't understand mental illness, so... I don't get how this is mental illness. Yeah, because you don't have it. How do the almonds tie in? It's a I fucking... Don't... It's like a coping mechanism, and it's just like a ritual but I know, I get that, but just keep... Makes her feel safe. Keep, yeah, yeah. Uh, keep the almonds. Yes. Okay, so the ritual to make her feel safe is dedicating herself to, in six months, killing herself. Sure. That's the ritual that makes her feel safe. That's how she copes. I don't know. <laughs> that's not coping. I don't fucking know, Rob. That's not coping. Anyway, so basically, like, as the show goes <laughs> on, we that's follow... That's how she copes. I have a coworker count... I don't like, so I'm going to shoot him in the mouth. We count the amount of time... Coping mechanism. ...that, uh, you know, the show keeps track of the time that passes, obviously, by these almonds. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not going to give anything more away. I have but... a bug bite on my ankle, so I'm thinking of amputating my leg from the knee down. You, That's again, how I'm coping with it. I know that you are trying to be funny, but yeah. you're just, you just don't get it. And it's just I don't get it. Why do you have to throw the almonds out? 
If you want to kill yourself, kill yourself. Don't throw out the almonds. Especially if, look, if you said, I'm going to kill myself in two hours, I'd say fine, so whatever. You want to just eat Do almond it. a day? No, I don't care if you eat them a day. Eat, just keep the almonds and have them as a snack in your cupboard for when you're hungry. No, she needs to count down. But you said she, th- oh, she throws an almond away a day. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant she just right then and there threw them in the no, garbage. No, so no, the whole no, jar no. in the trash. See, no. that, see, now you're on my side. That, <laughs> that would have been crazy. Yeah, she's using the almonds as see, a... See, see, yeah. that would have been crazy. <laughs> that would have made no sense. But also, now that oh you bring it God. up, why don't you eat the almonds? Just eat one a day. Yeah, she or could have eaten the almonds. Or put them in sure. a separate jar and then eat them right before you kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. Sure, Maybe have the like cyanide... a nice 180 almonds. Yeah, snack. exactly. Maybe the cyanide from the almonds will kill you anyway. Because there is a very, very minimal... I don't think that's enough no. cyanide. I think you need to eat something... Like 30,000. Yeah, closer to 18,000 than 180. But yeah. still, uh, maybe it'll get you started. Look, I don't know... Make you sleepy. I don't fucking know. Anyway, so it, it... My point was, she already had, like, very concerningly bad mental health. And then the show ended on a low note, which made me... You know, obviously, like, the viewer and... Did she kill herself? We don't know. I mean, not... I don't know what she'll do. Like, it ended on a on a kind of rough day for her, and she was just, like, having a shit day generally. But was... And then it just ends on at her, like, screaming. Okay. And, and were... she also did, like... Well, I'm not going to spoil it, actually. Forget no, okay. it. Okay. But... Were the almonds all out? I'm not going to spoil it. <sighs> because if there were still almonds, you know she didn't kill herself. You can't kill yourself before the almonds run out. That's just, Again, yes. that's just lunacy. There's no point in having the system if you're just going to deviate from the system. I mean, yeah, her... Come on. She still talks to her dead therapist, too. What? So, the therapist Ooh, is like... like a seance? She's, she, like, basically... That's wonderful. Basically, the therapist kind of, like, comes alive just in her mind. Oh, on she's her, schizophrenic. Kind of, like... I mean, not really. She basically just, like... She has her dead therapist picture on her phone as her background. Okay. So she just, like, opens her phone that's... and then talks to that. Okay. So, and then, no, yeah, and... no, schizophrenia. So, I, that's what I said. So, that seems... I didn't watch the show, but yeah. that seems like an interestingly intimate relationship to have with a therapist. What? Have them as the background on your phone and they're the voice in your head that you talk to when you're... You know? No. No? You because would, it's, like... You would put your therapist as the background yeah, of your phone? Listen. Yeah. As, like... Um, I, I can't like trust as someone with like a mental illness, they can't trust their own thoughts and they can't trust their own scope of reality. So to them, it's like the rational voice in their head. Like the therapist is the rational voice. It's like, you're well, being crazy okay, right well, now or, you know, sure, sure. I have two, I have two points of contention with that point one. That's not what a therapist is supposed to be. And point two, that Why doesn't, not? that doesn't mean you should put them on the background of your phone should be a dog or your, your spouse. That's, or, the therapist is like, try a rainbow or right, a horse. A, a seascape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Shouldn't be your therapist. That's, that's obsessive. That's. Okay, well, it's because she was, did she murder her therapist? Crazy. Did she murder her therapist? <laughs> Ooh, watch the show. It's oh so boy, good. Oh boy, oh boy. We should watch it. It's really good. Okay. But I'm, um, I'm going to say this. If you murder someone, you don't get to keep them as the background of your phone. She didn't murder them. Oh, come on. Spoiler alert. They died in her session on the first day, the first episode. Like, the first five minutes of the show is her therapist dying while they're in session together. And she was like... Say a heart attack? She was telling her about the almonds. Yeah. She was telling her about the almonds and she goes, hey, hello, do you have anything to say about that? And then she's just dead. So, um, she went to this therapist's funeral. Not really how people tend to die. She just fucking died mid-session, man. I don't know. And you wouldn't Anyway, she did. That's what I'm saying. Like, she died mid-session, and she was... The woman... The the patient main character was talking about her almonds. She was talking about that, so the therapist was just going to be silent and listen for that whole story. And then at the end of the story, she's like, Hello, right, but, okay, are you yeah, reply? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, you can't die in the middle of a story without someone noticing. You oh. don't just stop responding. That's not how death works. Well, that's how it happened in you the show. You don't just vacantly start staring up at the ceiling. I don't know. Stupid show. I'm not it's a fan. Good. You've I, never seen it. I haven't seen it, but I've heard a lot about it. Yeah. I've mixed reviews is what I'm hearing. Word on the street. I love it. I think it's a great and show. And I don't. <laughs> Hence, mixed reviews. Dear viewer. Reader. Wait. Listener. Yeah. You they're doing anything but viewer. Well, they, they can't read it either. They read they're the descriptions. The okay, fine. Whatever. They might read a transcript if they're I thought we were hearing. doing Dear Reader ironically. And we don't do transcripts, you asshole. Transcript? <laughs> Jessica? Transcripts. So the point of this podcast, or like the point, the one note that I had... To drive me to count 100 almonds. <laughs> I get it. Um, I'm surprised you're not already doing that. But I basically, really like I started watching the new Jim Carrey show. Basically, okay. 
I saw, I, I am a photographer kind of in theory. So I follow a lot of photography Instagram accounts and I mm-hmm. saw one that was like a cinematography one that was like a, sh- a shot of this movie or this show. Yeah. Do they make uh, apple cider? Huh? Or maybe apple pie? In my cinematography video? Or maybe, I'm trying to think, spiced wines. I know there's a big... Mold? Oatmeal. You like you what like it with oatmeal. What are you doing? Cinematography. Oh, you're cute. That's sweet. Hello? That's very cute. No, I didn't get it. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, though. I uh, thought oatmeal would help. Because nope. you have oatmeal literally every single day. I have cinnamon. oatmeal maybe four times a day, every day. Okay. <laughs> well, I stand corrected. Wait. Three. Okay, well... I you... have oatmeal three times. To... I'm not well. Well, well, I'm not well. doing okay. Color me confused <laughs> by many of the things that you were saying. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, Jessica eats oats. I'm like oats. a step away from 180 almonds. You, you're, you're eating oats like a hearty mule. To be fair, my mother, when you she has... You eat oats like a 600-pound beast of burden. My nutritionist and my mother oh my both tell me that it's good to combine oatmeal, so they're like, you should do two oatmeal packets. Bitch, first of all, So that's technically, not... I'm only having like no, one and a half no, servings No, first of day. all, shut... No, that's not right. Second of all, <laughs> your mother's not qualified to say things like that to you i know but i'm saying like a normal sized woman eats two packets of oatmeal at a time and you know that's not she doesn't feel like it's overkill she felt like one packet wasn't enough so she wants two packets and my nutritionist specifically said let's double this up and let's have two oatmeals granted i have not seen a nutritionist in years but uh I'm using them to justify my bad behaviors. So Jim Carrey has almonds. So yeah, so there was a really cool Jim shot Carrey of the show eats Kidding. Jim Carrey every day. No. Okay. That's your brother, Gregory. Uh, yeah. Greg Corner. No, go ahead. No. Um, they I were really mounds. Okay. Were they mounds? I thought they were almond joys. Uh, I can never remember. I'm go pretty, ahead. Yeah. The story that you told me, I'm pretty sure it was almond joy. Anyway, so basically, as I said about Star Wars, this is super dark. Um, you're inching closer to the phone. And it's stressing me out. Okay. So, Jim Carrey... So, basically, the show is very bleak. Uh, I... Anything that has Jim Carrey in it, I was like, it's either going to be Eternal Sunshine-esque or the number 23-esque, where it's kind of dark and sad and bleak, or it's going to be really funny. And it was it was the former. Okay, so. you, can't, you can't just add esque to the end of anything I in lieu s- of using better adjectives. What did I say? You just said it's either going to be... Eternal Sunshine esque or the number oh. twenty three esque, you have to you have to work harder to create a robust sentence. I said structure. dark and bleak. Right, you so no man. I'm saying you have to say you have to find a better way of saying it's going to be. For example, you have to say something akin to it's going to be like the number twenty three or like Eternal Sunshine of okay. the Spotless Mind. You can't yeah. just say esque or ish or that's what I meant. Add these suffixes to these words that don't. I expected have, it to be similar to Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Eternal in Sunshine. That a turtle? A turtle sunshine. In that it is Finding Nemo. Just it's all it's like it's it's real. Like it's it it's was very so woke. And like it's they have a lot of sex scenes too, which kind of are more Yas Queen. Like sex scenes um in movies and TV are usually more uh glamorized where it's like this is what sex feels like in your head. But then this show shows how sex actually looks from the outsider's perspective, and it is not cute. It's, like, kind of gross and awkward. And well, that's, You just said it because you're a Mormon. <laughs> I've never had sex, so, you know, how am I to judge? But, uh... That was good. Was it? We both told the same joke. I, no, don't Mormons... Oh, they, like, wait until marriage or whatever? I thought Mormons were the ones that had a bunch of wives. Yeah, it was, it was... Because that would imply, like, I'm a 20... I'm a 49-year-old woman, so... 49! It would... I would assume that in your Mormon scenario, I would have had, you know, a husband and seven other sister wives. Sister wives? I think they're uh, called co-wives. I don't know. I feel like they're sister wives. No, see, what that implies, and I understand why you don't... (laughs) don't What that implies is that they're sisters. Gross. And they all marry the same man. I mean... And that their children are... It's not fine. Their children are cousin siblings, like you and your brother. Stop. We're not cousin siblings, first of all. Also, I, there's nothing, like, actually wrong with that. Your parents are cousins. And, what do you mean? Like, uh, 
gross wise like if my sister and i are fucking the same dude it's not well that's still kind of gross it's not like the and dude is our brother it's still well that's true it's still kind of gross and i'm not all. fucking my sister stop it it's still kind of gross and after generations you're gonna get kids with three eyes let me see uh more men why only if they well i guess yeah if they have a million kids and then run into the world okay i don't need a list of joseph smith's wives i think gross. brigham young had 27 uh yeah, it just seems excessive. Like, wife you don't... titles. Rules. What do you do? Good. Spend one day a month with each wife? Like, that doesn't make sense. Let's see. You talk. I will read these. So, anyway, this Jim Carrey... But then don't interrupt me, okay? Sure. So, this uh, this show basically follows a uh, Mr. Rogers-type character, where Jim Carrey plays a beloved and very famous um, children's TV show actor. Um, and it's cute where, like, his... Um, he's related to like every single person in the show where like his sister um his sister's his co-worker his dad is his boss and um well that's it but <laughs> yeah so it's 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 a good show but it kind of you know he's in the early stages i guess of divorce um he lost a son spoiler alert a little delayed but uh you find all of this out in the first episode, so it's not that much of a spoiler. I've only seen three episodes so far, so I'm not that far into it either, but um, it's pretty good. It's pretty raw. It's pretty, like, again, much like Eternal Sunshine, it's very much the, um, the like, the reality of life, where it's like, you know, sometimes when you lose a child, you it destroys your relationship as well, and it makes the living sibling, um, or the surviving sibling, you know, in a, in a bad way, and... You know, they probably have, like, PTSD and they get, you know, grief-stricken and all that fun stuff. So it's kind of more, like, real and it's not very glamorous and it's just... It's very sad. Um, so it's hard to watch, but I do love Jim Carrey and I, you know... I do like the show. Anyway, please, Rob, step in. So this is interesting. Reading a lot about the Church of the Latter-day Saints of Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what any of this means, but it says... Uh, you, it's no longer allowed to be uh, you're not allowed to be polygamous but you can according to this which is just a wikipedia page in some circumstances men and women may be sealed to multiple spouses i don't know what that <laughs> means but it says most Maybe commonly it's not legal i uh, most commonly a man may be sealed to multiple wives if his first wife dies he may be sealed to a second wife a deceased woman may also be sealed to multiple men but only through vicarious sealing if they are also deceased so i don't know Ew. what the fuck that could what? possibly mean so the, a dead man and a dead woman can hook up? That, well, no. all right, Many dead men or dead women. I don't. So do you as, find the answer to my sister wives? No, I'm still I'm still reading. There is some oh. interesting stuff here though uh, that uh, it's been outlawed since around 1900. However, Bruce mm -hmm. R. McConkie, I don't know who he is, but controversially stated in his 1985 book Mormon Doctrine that God will obviously reinstitute the practice of polygamy after the second coming of Jesus Christ. So oh. after the end of days and Armageddon. Won't we all be... Oh, well, you they know, won't be dead because they're good, right? Well, they'll have ascended to heaven, but I, I, oh, I don't... Oh, so that's... I mean, the second coming... There are a lot of different... That feels like the same thing. In books of Revelations, there are a lot of different interpretations of what the second coming of Jesus Christ means. Some people think that he's going to come after the... Those, Armageddon. Well, no. First, there's the rapture of those who are... Excuse me. Those who are uh, allowed into the kingdom of heaven to sit with God and the angels and all those people and... Once they are raptured and the sinners are the only ones left to roam the earth, then Jesus comes and there's a war between the angels of heaven and the servants of Satan and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know what the Almost Mormon... war takes place on earth? Earth is, yeah, the battleground. Why? It's supposedly supposed to take seven years. Between... I don't know, man. Because I we're don't... in the middle of Yeah, I guess. Heaven I don't and know. Hell? Heat rises, but also Jesus comes down from <sighs> some sick escalator. I, I don't know. So let's see. In the case when a man's first wife dies and the man remarries, and both of the marriages involve a sealing, which is <laughs> an ordinance performed in Latter-day Saint temples, apparently they don't have churches, by a person holding the sealing authority. Uh, so it's just like a non-legal marriage. Well, the purpose of the ordinance is to seal familiar rela familial relationships, making possible the existence of family relationships throughout eternity. Oh. I'm sick of religion. Well, because in marriage it says till death do us part. 
So you figure at death you part, but uh, I guess in Mormon again, I think it's just illegal. So they thought, no, no, no. No, I don't. I don't think that's right. That in the afterlife, the man. Okay, here we go. In the case where a man's first wife dies and the man remarries, and both of the marriages involve a sealing, Latter Day Saints authorities teach that in the afterlife, the man will enter a polygamous relationship with both wives. Oh. Hmm. So it has to be by death. And I. That's what this says under. Mormon church policy, a man whose sealed wife has died does not have to request any permission beyond having a current temple recommend and an interview with his bishop to get final permission for a living ordinance to be married in a temple and sealed to another woman unless the new wife's circumstances requires a cancellation circumstance, a cancellation of sealing, blah, 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 blah. Okay, what do you call them? Damn it. Multiple sealings when the marriage ends in divorce. What the so fuck anyway. is this? So yes, did you have anything to say about the Jim Carrey speech that I gave? Uh, his show he is Mister Rogers. I was reading about the. How am I supposed to listen to you and read about the Church of Latter Day Saints? Yeah, no. I have to dedicate myself to God. You're right. So he is uh, Mister Rogers, and he gets divorced, and then he eats a hundred almonds. No. And then he adopts six penguins. That's what I heard. That'd be cute, but no. They made a movie about it. Eternal Sunshine of Mister Popper's Penguins. Oh my God! We're playing the game. What? Oh, the, the Cougar, Cougar Town game. Town. Okay, I've got one. Uh, maybe I don't. Oh, I'm going to be awful at this game. Okay, well, how about this? Uh, Courtney Cox and Ben Affleck team up to rob banks in Massachusetts. The Cougar Town Town. <laughs> you can do TV movie crossovers, right? No, but well, that right. was sweet. That was very sweet. Right, Except for know. the fact that I did not know that movie was called The Town. I was going to be yeah. gone, baby. Gone? That's, That's a different Casey movie. Affleck? Yeah, you're thinking of Gone Girl. Yeah. The town is is a different part of Manchester. It's part of a shitty suburb in Boston, which is saying a lot because there are a lot of shitty suburbs of Boston <laughs> where it's just a bunch of fucking people who are obsessed with being from Boston. I'm going to be honest uh, with you. Yeah. Yeah, it's not worth saying. Okay, good call. So, yeah, it's a uh, movie. The movie's fine. It's about a square mile or maybe less in Manchester where... 80% or 20% or some large number of the country's bank robbers come from. It's kind of akin to in Germany or you know Belgium, they have these little villages where and everyone is a, everyone's a clockmaker or they all make shoes or they, mm-hmm. the entire town is dedicated to this one craft and they master it. Their craft in this part of Manchester, I think Manchester, or Dorchester, who cares, is bank robbing. Yes! So, How and, interesting. Yeah, and then, then of course, Cougar Town is um, some, I want to say, NBC? Who What's, knows? I don't know. Some television NBC network. CW? Yeah, know. some television network reanimated the corpse of Courtney Cox, and <laughs> they did kind of a weekend at Bernie's for six seasons. Courtney Cox is very much alive. I want to clarify that. She's still alive now. What, what is this? What are we doing? What is this propaganda? This is like North Korea propaganda. Oh, no. The rumors you've seen of the death of Courtney Cox have been overblown exaggerated she is very much still alive and well our dear leader a question golfed 18 rounds a day our dear shot, leader. shot 15 holes in one speaking of which is yeah. it's kim jong-un now the moment, right yeah. is yep. he alive or what he's just as alive as courtney cox he is that's okay Take that so to he mean is, whatever you want okay 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 good so he's not okay whatever anyway <laughs> <laughs> so eh, he wait <laughs> what can i say <laughs> Oh, God. Anyway. So, okay. It's your turn, I guess. <laughs> it's a good fucking show. I don't know. I'm just done with this conversation. I've talked about TV for enough time, and now it's your turn you to had a bunch of notes. play the game. I didn't have any notes. That's why oh. I was reading about Mormon marriage oh, for 10 minutes. Oh, you said, let's talk about your shows. My notes don't matter, I guess. So I thought you meant that you had notes. Oh, I do have notes. They're just terrible. But mm. what... I mean, I can bring out more. You don't like any of my notes. You never like any like of my notes. I don't like anything that you have to so say. So let's play this game. No. What do you mean, no? no you I, suggested no, it. No, I said it was a good game to talk about, but I no, don't want to play it. No, it doesn't make any sense. No, I don't want to play it. No, come on. No, I come don't on. have any sort of recall abilities. I'm getting a stomachache even just thinking about it. That seems impossible. Yeah. Jessica, come yeah. on. Um... All right. Uh, they even did one. Tom, um, Tom Cruise jumps out of a plane and eats a vegetarian meal. A meat substitute meal. Mission Impossible Burger. Come on, Jess. Impossible Burger isn't a movie. 
Jessica, there are no rules. Yes, there are. It has to be movies. What are the rules again? Two movies. That's the, the literally the only rule. All right, 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 all right. And I feel like having it be Cougar Town Town is cheating too. Okay, fine, 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 fine. No, no, I get it, I get it, I get it. Tom Hanks grows up overnight and then goes bowling with Jeff Bridges. I don't know the bowling, like the little short. The little short. I don't know. What, I don't know what Jeff Bridges. You mean the big short? Going bowl. I yeah. know, but the movie, the first movie is little. The first movie is big. Fuck. <laughs> oh, is it the big short? No, it's the big big Lebowski. <laughs> it would just be the big Lebowski. Okay. Okay. I feel uh, like okay. probably like it would just be Cougar Town. And okay, like... let me try again. Tom Hanks grows up overnight, yeah. and then uh, does a bunch of financial dealings with Steve Carell and. The Big Ryan Short. Gosling. Yay. Okay. Yeah, see, the, the Lebowski one and the town didn't work because I didn't know those movies. So it has to be like it's a movie that I know. That means you lose. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. So <laughs> I got another one. Yeah. Okay. I love it. All right. Great. I don't think you will, but let's see. Uh, um, what? Uh, okay. Uh, the uh, Xenomorph. Uh, Hunts down Meg Ryan. <laughs> oh my god. What is a xenomorph? Is it just like a mixture of two... Is it like a human animal thing? It's an animorph. That's an animorph. What the fuck is a xenomorph? Is an alien in a different thing? Hey, I don't know what a xenomorph is. Alien versus Sally. <laughs> <laughs> I have another one that runs counter to that. <laughs> It's oh. Billy Crystal and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wait, also you can't just say it hunts down Meg Ryan. That could have been are being hunted male. down in the jungle. Say it again, sorry. By some sort. Of, yeah, don't talk over me. Billy Crystal and Arnold Schwarzenegger are being hunted down in the jungle and have to escape an unknown threat. When that Harry seems... met Predator. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. You did it. Oh my See, god. See how hard was that? <laughs> Easy peasy. Come on, what you got? Oh my god. Um, I don't have anything. I tried the entire time that I was away. Gotcha, pod racers. You didn't know I was away, but I was away. And I was trying to think the entire time, and I couldn't, so. Okay, I've got one. Yeah. Uh, a B-list actor inside the head of a B-list actor. He looks for his clownfish son. A B-list actor inside the head of a B-list actor? Inside his own head. This is and great. Then, what was the second one? Sorry. Looks for his clownfish son. Osmosis Nemo. What? No, man. <laughs> I don't know what a B-list actor. Finding John Malkovich. No. Oh, Jessica. I've never seen John Malkovich. It's called being John Malkovich. I've never seen that. John Malkovich oh. is the name of the man. It's possible I've seen it. I th- oh, Jessica. Oh God. You know, I'm. I told you as I predicted. I'm not going to be good at this game. Especially when yours are so fucking weird. I don't think it's played. What? Like what? Like, I don't think it's... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna... I'm not good. Jessica, come on. This isn't weird. <laughs> what about this is weird? <laughs> when Harry met Predator... All right, Predator. fine, fine, fine. Uh, Kevin Costner uh, barters with cigarettes and then ends up fucking a fish man. There has to be a I don't on know the... Cigarette movie. I know you're doing The Shape of Water, so I'm assuming it's The Shape of... I don't know the man bartering for... I don't know what movie you're talking about. The Shape of Water World. Nope. Ah, oh, Jessica. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what movies you're referencing. Uh, all right. Um. How about... Oh, yeah. The, the, it has to... They have to share a word. Yeah. The Shape of Water... Water world. Yeah, no, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's how the game is played. It can't be when Harry met Predator. Fuck you, <laughs> Kevin. <Harry laughs> Predator. It has. To, they have to share a word. Don't tell that's me. That's the. That's what I was trying to think of when I was away. You don't know anything. It's like what? What are the actual rules of this game? Yeah, yeah. They need to share a word. <sighs> I don't care for that. But, <laughs> uh, all right. Um, you can't okay. finding John Malkovich. Yeah, that doesn't work. All right, fine, fine, fine. Um, uh, in a, a world dedicated to a single day, uh, a bunch of young dinosaurs have to find their parents. <laughs> the land before Groundhog Day. No, what? 
That one's not bad either. No. <laughs> the Nightmare Before Time. <laughs> or Nightmare Before Christmas Time, even, if you want. That's cute. But, um... What? What was the first one? What did you say? The Nightmare Before Christmas. A movie dedicated to a day? Yes, it's that's, all Christmas. Not... Jessica, it's all Christmas. Every single day is Christmas or Halloween or whatever world Christmas. you're in. You're right. It's just, it's not, like, again, Groundhog Day applies as well. Okay. I suppose. Okay, okay. So does the movie Valentine's Day. All right, fine, fine. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. Will Smith fights aliens while Bill Murray is stuck in a time loop. Groundhog Day after tomorrow. No, that one's not bad. <laughs> I was, I was thinking, mine's worse actually. Mine, mine was Groundhog Independence Day, but <laughs> fine. Bill Murray is stuck in a time loop, and and uh, Wait, Jake Gyllenhaal, tomorrow... Jake Gyllenhaal hides in a library. So I fucked that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be Groundhog Day after tomorrow. Yeah. Sorry. That's fine. I fucked it up. Independence Day. You're right. Groundhog Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> that again doesn't really follow the rules. Jessica. Okay. 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 Come on. You're right. Come I on. should be better at faking the rules like you. Please. These are all really good. You think really fast. Yeah, man. Really you, fast. You do. No. <laughs> what? No, come on. You think quickly. Yeah, that's fine You're too. You're a quick thinker. Thank you. Lee. You, okay. You do one. No. What do you mean no? I can't. You have to do something. Um. Mm-hmm. 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 This is the problem. You can do it. I really can't. You We're going to have it. a ton of... Like, you need to pause it because we're going to have so much dead air. No, no, this is fine. <laughs> We're doing fine. Um... Ugh. God. I'm so bad at this. This is fine. I'm just... All right, okay, 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 okay. Let me, let me do this. Um, a, a bunch of nerdy scientists try and find... Oh, wait, that might be the wrong movie. We'll figure it out. Bunch of nerdy sur- scientists try and find Atlantis uh, while apes take over the planet. Oh, God. I'm just, like, I, I'm just a pit of anxiety. Hang on. Treasure Planet of the Apes. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Treasure Planet. I love that movie. Um, nope. <laughs> I can't. Okay, I, that's okay. Um... I can do it day. with a show. And it do it with good. two shows or a show and a movie. Okay. Uh, I don't care. Um, <laughs> more mad scientists try to bring species back from extinction while Amy Poehler... Jurassic Parks and Recreation? Yeah! <laughs> good job. I See, did, did it. it. <sighs> How hard was that? I can rest now. There you go. I can rest easy. Steve Carell steals someone's red stapler. You can do it. Red stapler? The office space. Uh, Jessica doesn't know anything about anything. <laughs> That's the real problem, is you've seen, conservatively, 11 movies. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's too bad. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> There's a movie called Office Space, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Hence, yeah, 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 the yeah, office yeah. space. All right, all right, all right. What's, um... Shit. I forget the name of the movie. Take your time. Okay, 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 okay. Take your time. Take your time. Nope, can't do it. Okay. Let's move on. All right, James Stewart contemplates suicide around Christmas time until he re- meets Roberto Benigni in a concentration camp. Wouldn't that just be It's a Beautiful Life? No. Isn't the first one It's a Wonderful Life? Yeah. And the second one It's a Beautiful Life? Nope. It's a Wonderful Life is Beautiful. <laughs> Come That's on, cute. Jess. That's cute. Uh, Let's please move on to something else. We can play this game after I've sat and thought about it for like a half hour because I cannot do it on the spot. All I'm thinking of for some reason is combining James and the Giant Peach sure. and Jack and the Beanstalk because for some reason in my head it's Jack and the Giant Beanstalk and I keep being like, wait, am I wrong? And I keep, I just get stuck on thinking about that and I can't move past it. Sean Connery is a secret agent stuck in a big piece of fruit. James and the giant... You're not doing them right. James Bond and the giant peach. No, that's not how it works. Don't tell me that's not how it works, (laughs) Jessica. You clearly can't do anything. I'm trying to help you out. That's not how the game works, but that is... That's... Jessica, I'm doing my best... Yeah, you're doing my best. ...to give you a bridge between what you're doing... It's very sweet. ...something halfway towards sanity. (laughs) 
Because what you're doing is I'm crazy. just having a hard time living, so... Um, okay, well, I don't know what to do with that. That's not good radio. Yeah, well, let's move Go on Go get a jar of almonds. fucking game. All right, fine. Your suggestion... First of all, you were the one who suggested it the first time, and you're the one who suggested it just now. I just made a stupid joke, and you went, oh, you're doing my game. Yeah, and then when you said, let's I was not play doing it, I said, your let's game. not play it. Jessica, you're a horse's ass. You're a fat butthole. Wow. All right. Well, I think that one was a tie. <laughs> so Thanks, babe. I'm going to respect you. Put a, a one in both of our W columns. Yay. We go to game three. Well, um, I'll put a one in your column. I don't... Bitch. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Let so wait, me. What else do you have? What let me. Notes? Let me look. Yeah. Let me look at my notes because your save us notes. Yeah. Help that me was save terrible. me. Da, 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 da. Uh, oh. Oh. Do you got one? Ooh. You got one. Go for it. Um. You I don't it. know which one it is, but you okay. It. So you can do it. a bunch of kids become secret agents yep. while a very horny British man. Uh. The spy kids who shag. Me? Yes. <laughs> I did. <laughs> doesn't work either i guess because fuck kids you really if james bond and the giant peach doesn't work <laughs> we can play it like that but you, you got dumb, it immediately you're so good i not you're immediately so i got it before you finished yeah i know we both had it at the same time i think unless yours is different it's fine that that'll be fine yours was good yours <laughs> was really good so let's just leave it at that i like how you also knew the answer but you just let me flounder by finishing the well i thought you were gonna spy. finish your sentence and you didn't uh, you went a horny <laughs> British dude. Because I don't remember which one the spy who shagged me was. What does it matter? Like, Just vaguely describe Austin Yeah, Powers. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it also a secret agent? I don't know. Okay. I, like, gold member, I feel like there's, you know, an easy in on that one, and then... All right, fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, this one is a, a bit of a stretch, <laughs> but whatever. Um, uh, Mike Myers <laughs> plays himself in six different parts, while Denzel Washington coaches a high school football team. I'm not going to get the Denzel movie, it's but fine. Mike Myers plays himself in six different... Mike Myers plays a horny British spy while Denzel Washington coaches a football team. Austin Powers, is that the... I don't know. I don't know what the second movie is. Gold Remember the Titans. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Yeah. So I don't know if uh, Remember the Titans was... Oh, he plays himself. Got it. Yeah. He, he... only plays three characters. He plays Dr. Evil, Austin Powers, Gold Member, Fat Bastard. Oh, shit. He plays at least four characters. He yeah, might play a couple I think it's more. just four. So anyway, there are... Uh, I don't know if Remember it's the Titans good. was college or high school. It might have been college, but it doesn't matter. Wouldn't have mattered. Right? What? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> no. I'm sorry, were you talking to me? Okay, whether or not they're college or football? No, absolutely not. I have not seen this movie or thought about it in years, so... You saw Remember the Titans? No. Oh. So, what? That's what I'm saying. I haven't seen it, or I'm, I'm assuming when the trailer came out, I thought about it, but um, that movie has not been on my radar for, for decades, arguably. Pull out your bad notes. All right. Fine. Let's see if we can't fill, oh, 10 minutes or so. Jeez. <laughs> uh, Most of these aren't even real sentences. This one just says 14-year-old stepdad. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I mean, you're you're no, never mind. Good save. Well, I was gonna say your family has a lot of weird, um, because you have so many children that are so many different ages. I do have a lot of children. In your, like you know, like you have cousins that are, like, t- five years old, and you have cousins that are like forty five years old. Yep. So, you have like kids that are uncles. My grandparents were Mormons. Basically, your your kid. They you got have kids sealed that to were. Everyone. You have kids that are aunts and uncles at like four or five years old. So I was going to say that makes sense, but then I was like, wait, a stepdad? No. <laughs> no. No one is a stepdad at 14. I hope. Correct. You'd have to get married at 14 yeah. to someone who already, already has had a, child. a kid. Yeah. yeah, that's gross. Which is, in theory, conceivable, but don't do that. But you'd be marrying someone at least double your age, probably. Well, no. You'd be marrying someone. If I am 13 and have a baby. And then the person's, the baby daddy, the baby's father, disappears, and I marry then another 13, 14-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be a 14-year-old stepdad. I more meant 
Yeah. I, I, Say your parents got divorced and then your mother marries a 14-year-old. That's what I was thinking. You have a stepdad. You, Jessica, being 49. Yeah. Have a stepdad who's 14. He's younger than I am. Yeah. So that was... The, the, I don't remember... My mom could start a Cougar Town. Thought. Yeah. Cougar... Cougar Town Town. Uh, yeah. Cougar Cougar Town Town. What is... Uh, let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, so the premise of Cougar Town is they're plotting to blow up the Empire State Building? What nope. is it? Uh, how are they... How are they directly tied to al-Qaeda. I'm There's, missing the link there. Okay, let's... I know that there, they... There is none. I'm going to cut you off. Okay. No t- ties to al-Qaeda. They're... Where did they get their money from? Not involved in ISIS. They... Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of the people just straight up don't work or just have jobs that they never go to. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know where they Osama get their money Osama bin Laden from. sends them money. Stop it. What do you... Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm correctly identifying ter- domestic terrorists and I'm the one who's the asshole. Jessica, well, hello? Well, the show's, the show's off the air, so you're good. No one's hurting anyone anymore. Okay, but you're still watching it. You're re-watching this propaganda. Not anymore. Now I'm watching Kidding. Okay. Well, with Jim Carrey. Okay, and he is funded by Al-Qaeda? Stop. I'm confused, man. I'm sick of you. <sighs> All right, I have a note that just says morbidly big-boned. You need to give notes that are full thoughts. Jessica, where are your notes? <laughs> My notes were to talk about the shows, and I filled up a good 15, 20 minutes, so... Okay, let's, let's, let's take her in. Oh, do you have any opinions, good, bad, or maybe surprisingly racist, about Sully Sullenberger? Jesus Christ. Um, the man who landed the plane in the Hudson? Yeah. I mean, come on, guy. You're representing care. all white people crashing planes into New York City. At least hit a building. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't like this. At least Newark. So do you think, here's my question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you think if you were uh, in that plane, you would have... Been a plane clapper? (laughs) Yeah. No, I I would have booed. I mean, come on. (laughs) You have so much... It would have been so easy. Yeah. It's it's supposed to land on land. But... um, Yeah. No, I'm saying if you were in that plane, do you think you would have... Um, for the entire time, thought you were going to die? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I don't know, because I think, like... Because they take off and pretty much immediately, I think, hit a bunch of geese. Oh. And then start going down. Oh, I thought they were really high up. No, they were only a few hundred feet. Let me look oh. it up. Let me read about Sully Sullenberger. Right, I'll see. share my opinion while you, Sully while you read. Sullenberger. Stop it. We don't need to do that. So I think that um, a lot of authority figures often will, like, not really tell you what's going on to make sure that you're not losing your fucking mind. So I feel like in situations where planes are about to crash, they probably wouldn't tell you what's happening. No, they t- have to tell you to brace. Yeah, but they, they, I guess, but I think they would just be like, oh, like, you know, we're, we're figuring it out. The plane is going down. Dude, just brace yourself, but whatever. Like, I, I would want someone to say, hey, we are going to crash Things aren't looking so good. Like, I feel like they would kind of word it in a way like, you're going to be fine. Brace yourself. It's going to be a little bit rough on the landing. Like, I'd be like, no, we're going to die. Like, don't, you know, like, I feel like they'd kind of sugarcoat it. So I feel like the entire time they probably were like, okay, everyone's going to be fine. It is going to be a bit of a rough landing. We found water. We have um, lifeboats. Like, you're going to be okay. Like, I'm sure that they, you know. But again, I don't know. Like, if a pilot is trying to save your life, I don't know how, you know, he's not going to be on the speaker. He's going to be trying to save the plane. So, you can talk, by the way. No, no, no. I'm, I'm still reading. So. Okay. Well, I don't know if you were just being quiet because I yelled at you. But... Nope. Okay. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think that if you did die in a plane crash, you would die believing that it's just going to be a little bumpy. So they struck a flock of Canadian geese at an altitude of about 2,800 feet. How high do you get? In a plane? Like 35,000? Yeah, more than 10 times that. Okay. So they were still... That's crazy. Yeah, they were a half a mile off the ground and only four and a half miles from LaGuardia. The pilot's view was filled with large birds. Passengers and crew heard very loud bangs. Oh, boy. It's pretty crazy that a goose or a number of geese... Would land a plane. Yeah, can down, not even land it, could force a water landing, can down mm, a plane. Yeah. I mean, if you're not, geese are big birds, I suppose, but if you're not goose-proof, you probably shouldn't be flying in the air. <laughs> you shouldn't be saying, yeah, this thing can go 10,000 miles, provided we don't hit a bird Yeah, like the that, size of a small dog. That are hey, also... Hey, guy, you, you might 
do that. There are a lot of birds yeah, free flying in the sky. That's kind of where they <laughs> hang out. Yeah. That's kind of their thing. I Not wonder... to be rude, but you kind of took their thing by rocketing yourself into the sky and yeah. just flying around. Or at least have a horn, like a car. Like, if, if you well, see a no, deer in the not, road, that's, you can... That's, what do you no, mean? Why? No. Well, because you're going 400 miles an hour. So? And the, you're, some planes go basically the speed of sound. Mm. And they're, they, Fine, they won't hear it. They, they do have lights. But have, but, like, a headlight situation where you can, like... The, the geese not seeing them is, I don't think, the problem. I don't, I don't know how a goose could possibly not see an airplane. But they might not know it's dangerous. They might just be like, oh, weird, a thing in the sky. But if you see a thing honking at you or whatever, I don't it's think, more... Geese honk? What do they care? They might just think it's a giant goose. If you're in a car and yeah. you're moving towards a deer, they might not necessarily run away. But if you start honking, they will run away. Yeah, but I'm, if you are going at them at 100 miles an hour and you honk at them, they're not going to react in time. Sure. Th- that's a different... It's thing, not a different. That's you can't stop a plane in the well, sky. Well, I'm saying that's also valid. I'm saying your point about the fact that the plane moves faster than the speed of sound, or the fact that the plane not, is just moving really fast, even and... faster than the speed. Of, it's it's moving so fast that the geese can't react or change direction or even notice that it's there. That's so sad. Or they do know it's there. They don't honking at it's not going to help. That's, I mean, the engines I... are tremendously loud. Okay, well, I'm just upset that they yeah. kill animals because I don't like that. But, yeah, I get you. Um, yeah, it, you're right. It is pretty crazy. They should definitely be bird-proof for sure. That's kind of horrifying. Especially, like, if you're traveling over, like, we go to Europe and stuff. You like, should it's, have, it's a the long plane flight. should be able to launch anti-bird capabilities. Like, maybe you shoot a snake into the air or something. <laughs> Couldn't you have a grate in front of the engine? Interesting. I think it needs to have a pretty tremendous amount of air intake, but mm-hmm. I, I don't. The alternative seems to be sucking, sucking yeah. geese into the engine and dying. And yeah, probably. So I don't know. I feel like just get. I'll something, write to Boeing. Yeah, even if you got literally just like a circle with like literally spaces that are just small enough that a geese between. can't fly into it. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't yeah. have to be like a very thin. Goose proof, not duck proof. Although I don't know, I Whatever. feel as though I the engine they might suck in the geese mm. and they might get stuck. I don't know. That's so sad. I don't know. I, yeah, I, it might like clog it up. I, but yeah, I just know. just again, put a grate there, put something there that would prevent birds from getting in. I don't know. I mean, to be fair, I feel like not a lot of planes what would you do? crash from birds. No, yeah, no. I mean, some do. But what would you do if you were on that plane? I I don't know. Get naked. What? What would you do if you're on that plane and you were going down and you thought, I'm going to die in 15 seconds? Cry for no, sure. No, come on. you got to do something. I would literally curl up in your lap and be like, this is it, and I love oh, you. Sweet baby boy. And do you think Peaches will be okay? Yeah, Peaches will be fine. Okay. Peaches that is fine be, right now. That'd be it. Um, but yeah, I worry about... I, I don't know. I, I don't think that... I think I would be immediately like so paralyzed with fear. I don't think I would have any thought of like... I can finally do something that's taboo. <laughs> like, that wouldn't be my thought. I'd start to dab. I've always wanted to try that. You can do that? I know, but I, I get no. too embarrassed. I don't know if I'm young enough or maybe too young to be doing it. I You're don't definitely know. not too young. Yeah, I, it's just, I don't know where I stand on it. But, it, you don't. know, with all these inhibitions removed, I think I might be brave enough to try it. Yeah, I, hope I, I, think... I hope I hit a sick dab right before I die. Okay, I'll try to ensure that that happens. Thanks, sweetie. Um. Anyway, that seems like a good place to... Stop. I'll dab you out. Ten minutes ago, Sat. See you later, pod racers. (laughs)